See how two Karens react to life in prison. This is Diana Lovejoy. In 2005, she met Greg Mulvihill on an online dating website. Both loved the outdoors and going for hikes, and they quickly became a couple. Two years later, they married, and in 2012, they had a son. After their son was born, Mulvihill lost his job, and Lovejoy started to experience stress and health problems from the burden of trying to support the family. The relationship began to deteriorate, and in 2014, they decided to divorce. For the next two years, the two were embroiled in a bitter divorce and custody battle. Lovejoy was so desperate for full custody that she accused Mulvihill Hill of violating her and their son. However, the allegations were later proven to be false. In June 2016, the two entered into a settlement agreement. They would share custody of their then three-year-old son, while Mulva Hill would receive $120,000 and Lovejoy would get the family home. She would have to sell or refinance the home to pay Greg the six figures she owed him. Even though they reached a settlement agreement, Lovejoy wasn't happy, so she hatched a plan. On September 1, 2016, at around 10.30 p.m., an anonymous male claiming to be a private eye called Mulvey Hill. Some reports indicate he told Mulvey Hill that he found incriminating evidence that Lovejoy could use against him in future court proceedings. Other reports indicate the caller claimed to have incriminating evidence on Lovejoy that could help Greg. The caller told Mulvey Hill that the information would be taped to a pole along a dirt path off Avenida Soledad in Carlsbad, California. He also told the 46-year-old this would be his only opportunity to get his hands on the documents. Mulvey Hill thought this was weird, so he called a non-emergency number to ask them if they thought it was strange. The dispatcher agreed it was odd, but they did not seem too alarmed. Mulvey Hill asked his friend Jason to go with him as he was concerned about his safety. They followed the caller's directions, and with flashlights and a baseball bat, they looked around for the documents. As they got close to some bushes, a noise startled them. That's when they noticed someone in camouflage lying on the ground and pointing a rifle at them. The two men ran back to their vehicle as bullets started to fly in their direction. Mulvey Hill was hit once in the armpit, but he would ultimately survive. His friend Jason was unharmed. Police were called to the scene and found a rifle round jacket and a towel with feces that was sent in for DNA testing. Later, when Mulvey Hill was interviewed, he pointed the finger at his estranged wife, telling police that the two had had issues for years. Authorities quickly focused on Lovejoy and learned that she had been training to use a firearm since her split with Greg. They also discovered she had a relationship with her firearms instructor, Weldon McDavid. Authorities tested his DNA, and it was a match to the DNA found on the towel at the crime scene. Further investigation revealed that the phone McDavid used to call Greg the night of the shooting was purchased by Lovejoy from a local Best Buy. Detectives also learned that Lovejoy was paying McDavid $2,000 for the hit, and she dropped him off and picked him up the night of the shooting. Both were arrested and charged with conspiracy to commit murder and premeditated attempted murder. They both pled not guilty, and in 2017, they went on trial together. McDavid testified that he lured Mulva Hill out that night to prove he had something to hide. He also claimed to have fired his weapon only because Greg announced he had a gun. Lovejoy did not present any evidence in her defense. She hoped a lack of evidence against her would give the jury reasonable doubt. Her plan failed as she and McDavid were found guilty of both charges against them. Lovejoy did not respond well to the verdict. And the defendant, Walden K. McDavid, guilty of the crime of conspiracy to commit murder. We're going to need to take a break. And we could have, have the jury go back into the Rumors spread that Lovejoy had had a stroke, but she simply passed out and was sentenced a few weeks later. At sentencing, she doubled down on the allegations that Mulvey Hill violated her. She also claimed that she was innocent of trying to end his life. I would never take Hill's father away from him. 
Despite her tears and pleas of being innocent, the 45-year-old was sentenced to 26 years to life. 50-year-old McDavid received 50 years to life for his role in the shooting. William Billy McGuire and Melanie Slate married in 1999. With their two young sons, they seemed to be a perfect family to people who knew them. After years of renting, the couple started looking to buy their first home together in 2004. They eventually found a place they loved, and on April 28, 2004, they closed on the property and got the keys. The couple went back to their apartment in Woodbridge, New Jersey. Billy made a few phone calls, the last one coming at 5.59 p.m. He was never heard from again. In May 2004, three suitcases floated ashore at various beaches in Virginia. The first suitcase was found on May 5th and contained human legs. The second suitcase, which was found six days later, contained a head and torso. The remainder of the body washed up in a third suitcase five days after that. The investigation revealed that the person was a white male in his late 30s. After an autopsy, police knew the man had been shot three times with a 38 caliber handgun. Even though detectives knew how he died, they had no idea who he was, so they did a facial reconstruction. After releasing the reconstruction photos to the public, they received a tip that the man might be Billy McGuire. Police investigated the tip, and after DNA testing, they were able to confirm the dismembered man was indeed the missing man from New Jersey. Police interviewed Melanie on June 2, 2004. She told police that early on April 29, 2004, Billy physically assaulted her at the apartment, so she hid in a bathroom. She claimed to hear him looking for something before he left. She said she never saw him after that. She pointed authorities toward Atlantic City and tried to paint him as an unstable, compulsive gambler. Police investigated the gambling angle, and found a video of an unknown person moving Billy's car to an Atlantic City motel on April 30, 2004. Even though police couldn't identify the person in the video, Melanie later admitted she found the car and moved it from a casino to the motel to mess with him. The detectives continued investigating and learned that Melanie purchased a 38 caliber handgun two days before her husband went missing. When asked to produce the weapon, she had no idea where it was. Investigators determined that the luggage that held his body parts were from the McGuire family home, and a towel found with the body matched the ones stocked at Melanie's clinic. They also discovered Melanie was having an affair with a co-worker since 2002. Easy pass evidence and fiber evidence made their case more rock solid. Even though Melanie was just 5 foot 3 inches tall, everything pointed to her, and she was arrested on June 2, 2005, after dropping her kids off at school. Labeled the suitcase killer by the media, Melanie claimed her innocence. On April 23, 2007, after a six-week trial, she was found guilty of first-degree murder along with several other charges. This is how she reacted. Guilty. How do you find us at the count of the indictment charging Melanie McGuire with desecrating human remains? Three months later, the then 34-year-old was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 66 years.